It's that time of year where we start to talk about the best watches, the best cars, the best phones, and of course, the best glasses of 2023. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a sneak preview into my thought process as I plan our end of year awards. And we're going to be looking at some of the best glasses that came out this year. So hi, I'm Robert, Stanley Vision Consultant here at the Spectacle Factory. And it's my job to pair you with your perfect pair of glasses. What I am showcasing today are some of the best releases from the entire year. There is more in my mind, but these are some of the ones that are kind of leading the way. And that's for good reason, because each pair on this table is special. And who knows, one of these could be right for you. So I'm going to begin with a frame that came out at the very start of the year and immediately jumped out to me as a potential winner. And it is simply put one of the coolest aviator style frames I have ever seen. As with all JFRA glasses, they are super creative and every element of these glasses is interesting and cool. This particular pair is in an olive green metal with a 3D printed lens rim, tortoiseshell acetate temples, and it's not just about that combination of those three different materials all put into one, but it's also about the shaping of the lens. As you see, it's got this little cutout at the side. These are pretty oversized, and therefore you've got to have a little bit of confidence to wear it, but if you have that confidence, these are a show-stopping frame. Having said that, this colorway definitely tones it down. Now, earlier in the year, I reviewed the orange colorway, which is definitely more of a statement. This is a pair that I think most people could wear most days. Week by week, these frames have been in my mind. Very few glasses this year have even put up a challenge against them. But ironically, JFRA started the year well, and they've ended the year well, because they've just launched the 3056. Very similar in terms of profile, Quite different in aesthetic, ultimately. The 3056 is constructed from milled titanium, so you have this really thick cut of titanium, which makes the frames particularly bold, especially from this kind of angle. From this sideways view, you really get the thickness of the rim, which is almost like a side shield, it's that thick. The double bridge is just like super sturdy. And the hinge design, well, they previewed that on the big screen at the Silmo exhibition in Paris and I was blown away by seeing the intricate construction of the temple. Seeing the end result is actually somewhat underwhelming because you know what's inside it, but you can only see the exterior. And I love how they finished it with the carbon fiber, but it definitely doesn't tell the full story of just how masterful the design of these frames is. We have lovely sculpted acetate end tips, and of course that orange accent color, which really makes them pop. What do you think? Does the 3056 beat out the 3052? For me, it's very close. So a late contender to frame of the year. But it wasn't just JFRA who have blown me away this year. Reki Vikai has also came out with a surprise as well. This completely transforms their usual aesthetic. Now, you've probably heard me on this channel talking about Reki Vikai's all the time because they are my most recommended eyewear brand. They're the most comfortable glasses in the world. They're the most durable glasses in the world. Based on my 10 plus years experience as an optician, I've not seen anything so durable and I've not seen anything so reliable as a Reki Vikai's frame. And they feel like you are not wearing glasses, which is the beauty of Gunnar Gunnarsson's design. However, they've also always been incredibly minimalistic with super thin laser cut titanium. The Laris changes that because it takes that Reki Vikai's construction, same manufacturing process, but with a much thicker cut of titanium to form the lens rim. And that totally transforms the aesthetic. These are both minimalistic and maximalistic at the same time. A look that is incredibly hard to achieve. I love this little cutout here in the corner as well. That's a beautiful accent on the frame. And the Laris is for the first time ever from Reki Vikai's a true statement frame. Around about halfway through the year, we got the release of the new Santos de Cartier Buffalo Horn Rimless Styles. And a little bit after that, we got the new Blue Wood. And when this came through, my jaw dropped. This shade of wood is just so elegant, it's so beautiful, but one that you could wear easily every day, especially with the platinum, which is more understated. The buffalo horn styles in this model, which are virtually identical, come in gold with either white or black horn. And those are beautiful too, those are really cool. But for me, the uniqueness of the blue wood, completed with that lovely Santos de Cartier screw detail at the end tip, make these an easy candidate for frame of the year. It's for me the best release from Cartier in 2023. Of course, with this frame, you would definitely want to modify the shape and custom shapes with Cartier is what it's all about. We actually took as a project the shape from the 3052 and fitted it to the Buffalo Horn version of these. They looked epic. And of course, there are all kinds of shapes you can do, but 
combining something like the JF Ray with the Cartier creates a whole new vibe. And that is something I find really inspiring to kind of create our own project together. And for me, again, this would have been an easy contender for Frame of the Year until, until Cartier threw out another new release, which is the new Greenwood. And everything that I've just said about the blue wood, it being elegant, understated, very wearable, is equally true with this green shade. Because again, I mean, of course, the, the shape and the tint that's on these makes them much more impactful. But just looking purely at the wood design, it's again quite subtle and classy, but just so stylish. Arguably, this is more stylish than blue. Although I think the blue would probably suit more people. But if you are someone who is a little bit more into fashion, definitely go for the green. For me, like this shade of green is just incredibly on trend at the moment. I love how that's also paired with a similar tint in the lens. It just completes the style perfectly. And of course, those faceted edges accentuate the shape even more. So it's gonna be a really close call between the green and the blue wood, and I have a lot of thinking to do. One of my favorite things to see all year was the new Kazal 607 in aluminium. And I don't know if these have a chance of actually winning the award, but definitely in terms of frames that made an impact on me, this is right up there. This might be the single biggest frame release of the year for me. And that's because the 607 is just such an iconic style, but I love how they've reinvigorated it in the aluminum material. It allows them to provide that beautiful, luscious blue, which contrasts really nicely against the steel gray temples and the semi-transparent gray acetate. And I do appreciate the fact that these now have nose pads, which makes them far more adjustable. This is a really cool frame, but probably just a bit much for most people. But maybe in sunglasses of the year, this could be a definite challenger. And a true unisex frame, by the way, as the Laris is as well, are the new Barton Pereira Rimless, which of course I've been wearing myself. Now, when these were first released, I liked them. I didn't love them. But having worn a pair and not just recognizing how they make me feel, but recognizing how much other people seem to love them, that has completely transformed my opinion on these frames. I think they are 10 out of 10. This frame, which is the Tom, is of course in white gold with a brown striped acetate temple, and of course, with my own custom shape, and a truly stunning, blissful blue gradient tint with ruby flash coating. I just love how these came out. They feel amazing to wear, I think they look amazing based on the feedback that I get and based on what people say about them. And let's not forget that Barton Pereira won Frame of the Year for 2022. So can they make it two years in a row? Make sure to subscribe to find out. And last but not least, we have some really amazing ladies contenders that came out this year. First of all, from the Reace collection by Chloe, this amethyst violet acetate is out of this world, like literally out of this world because it definitely reminds me of the cosmos. We've got some incredible shades of purple, lilac, there's even yellow in there. If you don't know about these frames, they are produced from the offcuts of acetate from the regular Chloe glasses. So usually those waste materials would just be discarded and it's a very wasteful manufacturing process. But Chloe have taken those offcuts, melted them down and created new unique sheets of acetate. And these are produced in very small quantities. They're all limited edition. This is number 10 of 100. So only 100 pairs of these worldwide, which makes them even more special. But the 019 one is not going to have it easy. Definitely not, because we have two other amazing candidates. We have the Kazal 5003, and we have the LA Iwerks Pirate. Both stunning frames. I mean, what more can I say about these two? You see them for yourself, and you know instantly how cool they are. The Kazal with that gold cut through the black acetate and the faceted top rim, it makes such a statement, but being titanium, beautifully lightweight, so easy to wear. And LA Works are making the best acetate frames in the world right now. This is such a gorgeous golden acetate. It almost defies belief because it looks like gold leaf, which I know it can't be because it's acetate. It's a sight to behold. Just to hold it in your hands makes you feel in awe, really. So yeah, the ladies category is really stepping up this year. We have three amazing frames and there might be more to throw into the mix as well, but any of those frames could easily win this year's ladies award. And that about wraps it up for this quick preview of some of the frames that I think are the best from the past 12 months. What do you think? I'd love to know. Leave your thoughts in the comments. If you found this video interesting, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to the channel for more of the best eyewear content on the internet. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.